Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 43 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee, poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. w. Most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick up your kit. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 42. So I must ask, how many of you guys were successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend, double chest bump. And if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. OK, now hopefully some of you guys got this and I think it might be some of you would just get so locked up and not able to apply the math, you know, to the problem you have. It's like over here is your problem <clears throat> and over here is the math, you know, but you have trouble taking the math, you know, over to the problem you have. But never fear, if you got confused with it, I'll show you how to do it. And I hope at least when you watch me do it, you'll kick yourself and say, well, yeah, why didn't I see that? Well, when you see me do it enough times, then with a little thought and a little practice, eventually you'll be thinking like an engineer also. And I hope though, I hope a few of you guys were actually able to figure this out because I did give you, I did give you some pretty, uh, some pretty good hints. Okay. So what was the homework assignment? The homework assignment was that last week, last week, what we did was we were, <clears throat> we were able to calculate the tilt like if I tilted this 20 degrees, it would read 20. Or if I tilted it this way, 20 degrees, it would read 20 or 20 or 20. But the problem is really what you want to know is you want this to be like negative 20, positive 20. And then you want two distinct things. You want the tilt along this axis, which would be pitch and the tilt along this axis, which would be roll. So you would want a positive and negative pitch and a positive and negative roll. So we need to be a little bit more careful with what? Our trigonometry. We need to take advantage of some of the data that we have that we didn't use in that first uh, that first solution last week. So let's see, let's do a quick, just get you caught up in case you're just jumping in here and haven't been with me on the last few lessons. Uh, what you need to do is you need to go to www.toptechboy.com, click on the happy little search tool, and then search on something like schematic for tilt meter. You'll come to this page. This is the schematic. I have the MPU 6050 and I have the 1306 OLED. We're not using this yet, but you might as well get the whole thing set up, uh, hooked up because we'll be using this in the future. And this is just some simple code we're going to copy to get the, you know, to get the excitement accelerometer going. Okay, so this is from a few weeks ago. So you get that code. Let's come over to Thani and let's paste it in. And then there were a couple of things. I found that this round function doesn't really work in MicroPython. It sometimes gives erroneous results. And so I'm going to take that out and we're just going to measure X acceleration, Y acceleration. And then also we want to measure Z acceleration. So we're going to see, say Z acceleration is equal to mpu our object dot excel our method dot z that's simple enough and then let's go ahead and print that out here as well along with x and y we will print the label z okay and then the value z acceleration and then the tag G to show that we're measuring in G. Now with a little luck, this should run, but let's go ahead and make sure that this is going to run. 
that's good. In <clears throat> those edits, I didn't make any problems. So what do we see? We see that, uh, let me switch back over here. We see that in the x-axis, we see in the x-axis, we're measuring zero G. In the y-axis, we're measuring zero G. And in the z-axis, we're measuring one G. Why? Because that proof mass in the z-axis is feeling the acceleration of gravity. It's feeling that one G of the gravity pulling down on it. So it reads one G. Now, what we saw in earlier lessons is as we tilt this thing, as we tilt this thing around, all of those values change in interesting and, might I say, mysterious ways. And so what your homework assignment was, what we had done in the earlier uh, lesson, we could just measure any tilt would just be measured as tilt. But what we wanted to do now was specifically measure pitch, positive and negative, and roll positive and negative, so we want to get both angles, okay? How does that sound? <clears throat> I hope that sounds pretty good. And so what we need to do is we always need to start with what? A bunch of if statements and looking at the data and just coding like a wild man? No, we wanna stop and think like an engineer. And what does an engineer do? An engineer always starts with a picture, a picture of what he or she is trying to solve, okay? So let's come in and kind of what we're thinking about is we're thinking about tilting this. So let's start with this picture, a lot like we did last week, but we'll just kind of start again here. And we have the board is tilted. Okay, the board is tilted like that. I don't like that. Let me try again. Okay, we'll come in here like that. And now the board is tilted, so we'll come up like this. And then we'll come from here to here. And that is a tilted board, and we have a right angle here. All right, now what do we have? We have the accelerometer. We have the accelerometer, we have the MPU 6050 on that tilted board. And so what I'm gonna draw here is, I'm gonna draw that Z axis proof mass. Let's see that, let me try that again. I'm gonna draw that Z axis proof mass, like here to here. Like that, that's that Z axis <coughs> proof mass. Okay, now, what we want to do is we want to start drawing our vectors. That gravitational vector comes where? It comes straight down, and it is 1g. So that is a force acting on that z-axis proof mass. And so let me see if I can draw that in there. Let me see if I can draw that in there. So I'll come here. Okay, like that. That's gravity. But does the z-axis proof mass respond to that vector? No, it responds to the force coming in perpendicular, the perpendicular to the tilted accelerometer. So let's see if we can draw that. And so that perpendicular vector would be like that, okay? And now, what do we also have? We also can finish the triangle like that, okay? And uh, I have got to do that again. I actually just have to do that again because I just didn't quite make it good enough to do the drawing like I want. So let's start with the gravitational vector. It comes straight down like that. You see, I really needed it to be a little bigger. Now, the orthogonal is the vector that comes in perpendicular to the proof mass. That is what the proof mass responds to. So we'll come here, and that one is going to come in perpendicular, okay? And then maybe, and then we have this one, okay? And now, what is this? This is a right angle. Okay, now how far did we tilt it? We tilted it theta, and then let's label some things that we know. This vector here coming down 
we know what that is, right? That's the gravitational vector pointing straight down, and that's 1g. But going back to trigonometry, on our triangle, that long leg opposite the right angle is the what? It is the hypotenuse, okay? Now we also see that this angle is going to be the same as this angle. So this angle is also theta because you see if theta is zero, the orthogonal and the gravitational are the same. There's no theta between them. Or if you tilted at 90, that other one's going to be tilted at 90. So you can see that that is the same angle. All right, what do we call, so theta is our angle of interest. What do we call the side that is adjacent to the angle of interest. We call it the adjacent side. So this is our adjacent side. And then what is this up here? This is our opposite side, okay? So I want to figure out what theta is, and what do I know? I know the hypotenuse, and I know the adjacent. So let me just catch you up what we did last week, and then let me show you how we're going to do something different this week. What we can do from what we learned in our practical trigonometry lesson, what do we know? No. We know uh, very simply <clears throat> that uh, the, the uh, cosine of theta, the cosine of the angle. Why did I choose cosine? Because it's the one that wants to use the adjacent, and that is that z-axis. And so that is going to be equal to the z-acceleration over the hypotenuse. Now, what do we know? The gravitational vector is 1. So this becomes simpler, and what does it become? It's just the z-acceleration. All right. Now, I have cosine of theta is z acceleration, but I want theta, so what could I do? I could take the, the, the arc cosine. The arc cosine of cosine is just the angle, and then what I would have is arc cosine of <clears throat> z acceleration, and that would give me the tilt. But the problem is that's going to give me the tilt, whether it's tilting this way or tilting this way, or tilting in any which direction. I'm losing all access to, did I tilt positive? Did I tilt negative? Did I tilt along the y-axis? Did I tilt along the z-axis? You see, I'm losing all of that. All right, so I've got to think, I've got to think that is there information that I have that I'm not using? Yes, there is. And what is that? The other two acceler ex you know, accelerometers. Now, what I want you to see is here, this is what? This is the z-axis proof mass. OK, that's the z-axis proof mass. What do I also have? I also have just for the sake of uh, the illustration here, I also have the what? I have the y-axis proof mass. And that is going to have some perpendicular force on it. It's going to have some perpendicular force on it. And I'm measuring that perpendicular force on it, right? Right now, we're measuring that perpendicular force on that. That is the y value that I'm reading right now. Why is the y value 0? Because uh, why is the y value 0? The, the z proof mass is like this. The y proof mass is like this. If the y proof mass is like this, that gravity vector isn't hitting it. If I tilt it a little bit, then I'm going to see a little bit of a value there. Okay, but right now it just goes right by it because it's perpendicular. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, so let's come back over here. And now what I want you to see is I have this y output. And what is this y? Okay, what is this y here? That is this vector here, right? It's exactly this vector here is the vector that is hitting 
the y-axis accelerometer, okay? That opposite. So the opposite vector is the normal vector to the y-axis accelerometer. Don't think about the x-axis, right? Don't think about the x-axis. We're not talking about this. We're just talking about this, okay? So now I have both the adjacent and I have the opposite, and they're very, very important because when, I, when I'm tilting this way, the vector's going this way, the, the, uh, that opposite vector is going this way. When I tilt this way, the opposite vector is going that way. And so that's going to have a sign, this versus this. I'm going to introduce a sign there, right, like a positive or a negative. So that is very important. So now what I really want is instead of just using the adjacent and nothing else, what do I really want? I want to use the adjacent and the opposite. What function was that? That was our friend tangent. Remember what we learned? The tangent of theta is equal to what? The opposite over the adjacent. Okay, now how do I get the angle? Well, the angle, what do I do? I do the arc tangent, the undoing of tangent, because if I... If I arc tan tan, I undo the tan I just did. I'm just left with the angle. And that is what? Of opposite over adjacent. Okay. And then that would be arc tan. Okay. And what is the opposite? The opposite is the y acceleration. And then what is the adjacent? That is the z acceleration, like that. I need to get further out of your way. Okay, so now let's see if we can do that. And then remember that we need to convert that to degrees. So theta degrees <clears throat> is going to be equal to theta divided by 2 pi times 360. All right. Let's come in here and let's see if we can start coding this thing and let's see what happens. All right, let's see if we can start coding this thing. I think I'll just give it, uh, put it like this to make sure that we're not covering anything up and then we'll switch to that other view. <clears throat> so let's stop. So we're measuring X, we're measuring Y, and we're measuring Z. We don't want to print here. Okay, and this right, I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this pitch instead of theta because it's this angle that I want, not this angle. We're going to call this pitch and we're going to call this roll. Okay, so what am I going to calculate? Pitch. And pitch is going to be equal to what? The math, better import math. <clears throat> it's going to be math dot arc tan and then what the y acceleration divided by the z acceleration like that now let's print uh, let's let's convert it so pitch degrees is going to be equal to pitch divided by 2, divided by math.pi, spelling pi right this time, <clears throat> times 360 will take us to degrees, and then we want to print. What do we want to print? We want to print pitch degree in degrees, like that. Okay. I will need everyone to hold their breath this time. Okay. Ah, look at that. Okay. And guys, I just realized something that I need to do. Okay, what's what's good is uh, what's good is we're reading zero degrees, and so that's good. But what you see is that we don't want noise to cause this thing to crash. And so one thing we need to make sure that we do is, is say that if uh, z acceleration is greater than one, then what do we want to do? We want to say z acceleration equal one, right? Because if 
acceleration of gravity is 1. If you had a little measurement error and it came out to 1.001, it would cause the program to crash. So let's put the reasonable domains in here and same, let's say, what's the other one we're doing? If y excel is greater than 1, then we'll make y excel equal to 1 like that. Okay. All right, so we, we needed to put that in there, but I'm glad the program ran. And so now let's go like that. Okay, and so it's reading right at sort of like almost perfectly zero degrees. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come where you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the nose up. And look at that. Boom! What did we get? We're measuring pitch with the nose up. And look at that. Is that not a thing of beauty? Let's bring it up to like 45 degrees. And look at that. Boom. Perfect. Look at that. What do we want to do? How about if we go nose down? Negative pitch. Boom. Look at that. Who's your friend? Who's your friend? Trigonometry is your friend. Okay, so nose down is negative, and then nose up is positive. But what are we going to do? What is the moment of truth? The moment of truth is I'm not going to pitch. I'm going to roll, and pitch doesn't change. Pitch doesn't change when I roll. Look at that. Man, are you guys as excited about this as I am? If you don't understand what I just did, go back and watch it again, right? I taught you the trigonometry. I taught you the MPU 6050. And then we just drew a picture of where those forces are going. And then it is like absolute magic. It is like absolute magic. Okay. Now I need to ask you, I need to ask you something. What do we still need to come in and do? What do we still need to come in and do? We calculated pitch, but now we need to think about roll. <clears throat> okay, you would probably go in and make this too complicated, okay? But what you got to see is it's exactly the same thing, only instead of going here like this, I'm going where my tilt is like this. Now, if I drew this on the chart there, it would just be a point because you can't see that third axis, but roll is like this. And who's watching roll? Is it the Y accelerometer giving you that top vector? No, the Y accelerometer is not giving you that top vector when you're tilting like this. What is giving you that top vector? What is giving you that top vector? The X, the X accelerometer, right? The X accelerometer. And I think I can draw it like this. Like I could show you that the X accelerometer, if I were just to, to draw a picture of it, the X accelerometer would be like this, okay? And it's going to see this kind of tilt, okay? It's going to see this kind of tilt, all right? But this should be really, really easy, right? Because it's going to be almost exactly the same thing. Only what is it going to be? Okay. This time instead of pitch, I am going to calculate roll. And roll is going to be equal to math.atan of what? The x <clears throat> accelerometer divided by the Z accelerometer, like that. X divided by Z instead of Y divided by Z. And then roll degrees is going to be equal to roll uh, divided by 2 divided by math dot pi. Okay, uh, like that, times 360. And now what we're going to do is <clears throat> we might need to print all this in one print statement. I'm not exactly sure of that, but okay, here where we're saying pitch degrees. So what I'm going to say is pitch
and then need a comma there. And then what we're going to do is comma. And then that will be degrees like that. OK. And then comma roll. And that's going to be roll degrees. And then we'll put the. I think I better abbreviate these, huh? That's getting kind of long. All right, so let's stop this. Let me give it a little bit more room there. Okay, so now what do we expect? We expect a what roll and a what pitch. We expect zero and zero. So let's see it. Okay, and so that is reading zero and zero. That looks good, and it's auto scaling. So let me try to get it to stop auto scaling. Okay, now what we want to watch is I better get further out of your way. I better get further out of your way. What we want to watch is pitch. Pitch is blue. Okay, and what's coming up? Pitch is coming up. We go up, we get up to about 45 degrees. And what do we see? Roll is not changing. Why? I'm not rolling. Let's go nose down. Nose down is working. OK. Now, the moment of truth. Let's roll. A right roll. It's doing is negative. OK. And a left roll. It's doing is positive. You could kind of define that either way, however you wanted. I'm not sure if there's a convention for that or not. But now watch this. Okay, when I'm rolling, I'm not pitching. But now watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna pitch it. Let me, yeah, I'm gonna pitch it, okay, without rolling. But now I can add a roll on top of the pitch. It's able to do both of them at the same time. Who is your friend? Trigonometry is your friend. Okay, guys, always when I'm doing these lessons, like I'm like six or seven, I, I'm six or seven lessons ahead of you as I'm re recording this one. You guys are back just doing the, the uh, servo stuff. And so I'm doing all this stuff thinking that I'm really excited about it, but then I'm not getting feedback with you. So I've run off in this direction, and I'm just afraid that maybe I'm making people mad or nobody's really that interested in this. Nobody is really that interested in this, and maybe I've just kind of made people mad. But this is really incredible, man. Just from math and physics and engineering, we have made our own tilt meter using the raw data coming off of the accelerometers. And I think that is really cool. OK, I'm going to give you kind of a little homework assignment because I really want to see, are you guys thinking about these three axis accelerometers? I've shown you the math. I've shown you the physics. I've shown you the engineering. So let's go back over here. And uh, <clears throat> let me just kind of simplify this a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to go back. Let me stop this. And I'm going to just print the x, y, and z acceleration. And I'm not going to print the angle. OK. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get this all very far out of the way. I'm going to get out of your way. And then I want to show you something here, OK? So we're going to run this, OK? And what are we getting here? What are we getting? We have the x-axis accelerometer is the, uh, the x-axis accelerometer is the blue, okay? And the y-axis accelerometer, let's see. Let me get a better view here. The x-axis accelerometer is the blue, the y-axis accelerometer is the orange, and the z-axis accelerometer is the green, okay? Now, what I want to show you is that x and y are measuring zero g's. Why? Because it's like this. The, the, the y is like this, and the gravity vector doesn't even hit it. The x is like this. The gravity vector doesn't hit it. The z is like this, and when it's flat, it's taking that full 1g. OK? But now, what we see is, as I tilt this, OK, as I tilt this, OK, let me tilt it like this. Now what's happened? 
now it's the X that is seeing the 1G and the Y and the Z are not seeing anything. Or what if I tilt it like this? Now who is catching the full force? Who is catching the full force? The Y is. And the gravity vector is missing the X and the Z. But you see, it's like, it's like as you play with the orientations, as you play with the orientations, it seems like there's always one that is getting hit by that acceleration vector. Now, what I want you to do, and this is your homework for next week, is just do this program. The program's already done, right? You've got the X acceleration, Y acceleration, and Z acceleration. But I want you to find the orientation or the condition, and you have to record it, and you have to post it to YouTube, link back to this video down below, link to your solution. But you have to find the orientation or the configuration or the, the, the condition that will lead to measuring zero G simultaneously on X, Y, and Z, where you, you, you're printing out or you're graphing and it shows you X is zero G, Y is zero G, Z is zero G, all at the same time. Like here, I can get anyone I want to be zero G, but you gotta get all three to zero G at the same time. Now you can start by just playing around with it and seeing if you can find it, or then you're gonna have to kind of think through it and then show me, okay? I had a lot of fun thinking about this one. Okay, guys, I really hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. Again, you guys on Patreon, standing with me, you're the guys that are keeping this content coming, right? I'm depending on you guys to allow me to continue to make the investment in equipment and time to keep these videos coming. Thank you. I really, really appreciate your help. I know things are tough out there. You guys making sacrifices and helping me. Thank you very much. You can also help me by giving me a thumbs up. Leaving comments will help me. Also, subscribe to the channel when you do ring the bell so you'll get notifications of future lessons. And most importantly... And always share these videos with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com. We'll talk to you guys later.